Hi guys and welcome back to the Banner Saga. On the last episode, we're now back with Rook's party. We've left Frostfetter. We've got a few injuries to deal with. Uh, we've got 17 days worth of supplies, which isn't well, which isn't necessarily the greatest thing, but it's it's something. Something better than nothing. Right, so they're injured for one, two, so two days. So basically, I just need to rest here for two days. So we'll essentially got 15 days worth of supplies we've got no renown so we can't even promote people we can promote Hogan um, and I think he needs to have a serious bump up to his health cool so let's rest for two days uh, unfortunately we do have a story here little conversation just take it easy for a while people are noticing oh they've noticed have they we're on the edge of dying daily and you want me to take it easy gods I should be plowing twice as many fields you understand don't get us thrown out this caravan Mogan it's not just you who suffers right so you get married have kids now I'm supposed to settle down too yeah what happened to the two brothers climb up as you approach. That's right, I've got a kid to take care of. Cool your head, Mogan. Hogan departs, leaving Mogan looking awkward. Rook, what brings you around? Sorry, it was none of my business. No, but it's no secret. I like women, Rook. They like me. They like the scar. <laughs> Forget it. Listen, all this, all this death, every night half the caravan cries itself to sleep. It's pathetic. Come on, Rook, be honest. This is good living. Half the world just tilling the soil till they keel over. What kind of life is that? We're lucky you could go your whole life with no goals, no purpose, nothing to fight against but boredom and hunger. I'm glad for all this. I get what you're saying. Look at it like this, we're fighting to the death almost every day, yeah? You can curl up in a little ball of fear, you can go hide in the woods eating nuts and appreciating leaves or some nonsense. Or, you can enjoy the struggle. Know which one I pick? Anyway, just so you know, I'd never go for a let, promise you that. Or Oddleaf, or yours. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that, one's my daughter and one's the chieftain's wife ex-chieftain I suppose uh, appreciated it Mogan you depart unsure whether your opinion of Mogan changed for the better or worse seems like a good guy he's just all about he's all about the fight he just loves a good scrap what's wrong with that rest for one more day and we're leaving I'm a bit worried Moronto about that was never the kind of place someone would build a town Fittingly, the Var living here aren't known for welcoming visitors with open arms. Can you believe that? So we caravaned up, rested up, and Wormtoe's right here. The Var will find you before you see them. Not surprising with this many people behind you. With weapons drawn, they demand to know why you're here, but back down when Ivor tells them he's come to see someone named Krummer. Krummer? 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 I don't know how to pronounce it. Well, I'll be damned. He looks cool. He's like a old blacksmith. Crummer, it's been a long time. Yeah, it has. So what brings Ingvar to Wormtoe with his very own village of humans? Ingvar? Hmm, he's changed his name. I wonder hear if Ivor used to be important. Bad news. Dredge are coming down from the north. We barely made it this far. That is dire news. Come on, we have food. We'll discuss more in the Mead House. As you follow the old Val into the meagre town, you catch him quietly saying, if it were anyone else. Hmm. Ivor's important. To talk with the warriors here, I'll be honest with you, half want to go north and find out what happened at Blotz... Blotzbocker. Bulker, Blotzbucker, Blotzbucker. 
Um, <laughs> some think we should go to Grofheim instead. None of them are happy you are here. What do you think? If I had it my way, I'd stay here and let the dredge come. But you made this a problem, didn't you? We can't feed this many people for long, even if they don't eat much. This is a vile town. Most of us take care of ourselves. We, you've got women, children. We could pitch in, make this place livable. It doesn't work like that. These vile are here to get away from civilization, not make one. It's Krummer's call. It won't be long before Dredge are here too. No, it won't. If there's one thing we should do, it's tell Yurinda what's going on. Who's Yurinda? Val King. Well, as close to one as we have. Ingvar, where'd you find these people? Stay here and rest, but once yours are ready to go, we do. I'm going to see off those who want to head north, but I'll join you to Grofheim. More travel? No, we've already come so far. Stop the pouting, girly. Even if Yurundur won't listen to a tired old vow like me, I have a feeling they'll pay attention to your friend your friend Ingvar here. They'll listen to either? Ha! He hasn't told you. Of course he hasn't. Do what you need to, but don't be long. What the hell is all that about? Right, uh, let's go with our free renown to the market and see if we can buy some supplies. We should have saved them. One renown gets four supplies. So it bumps me up to the, those two days that I used to heal. We should have saved the renown, like, uh, not brought the supplies in Frostfetter, but, you know, live and learn. If I had a crystal ball and foresight, I would have done it. Krummer, can you spare a moment? Mostly no, but I'll try. I've never had a moment to thank you for your hospitality. Consider it done then. Uh, how did you get all these Val to follow you? So who's Ingvar? I bet you have some incredible stories. How did you get all these Val to follow you? Respect, young one. After the Second Great War, wasn't much time for me left to do. Sorry, wasn't much for me left to do, so I started training other Val to fight. Got tired of that, made a place in Wormtoe. They still come calling, even with no wars to speak of. Seems like that might be changing, though, don't it? So who is Ingvar? Ha! I'm not surprised he never told you. I'm just surprised he can stand being around anyone at all. Your friend was one of us long ago, I mean... The dredge bashing type. He was called Ingvar then. And if you want to know why he changed his name, best ask him yourself. I'm too old to peddle in gossip. Uh, any wisdom on fighting dredge, that'd be good. Depends how much you know. They're all armour. Tap them hard enough though and it will all shatter. Line up a whole row of slag and they'll explode on each other all the way down. You get in a big brawl? Half your time is spent setting them up for it. And if you see one bang his axe like a tuning fork, try to kill him quick. Sometimes the slag he's calling won't even show up. Bet you have some incredible stories. I might, I might. Or I could be the most boring Val you ever met. Depends on how much you are, you, how much you like killing dredge. Ask me again someday. Might tell you about the time we filled a dead yox with whale teeth. Ooh. And why? Uh, I'd best leave you to your business. I suppose you should. Take care, friend of Ingvar. Uh, so what's next? I guess leave. Can't do anything else. Grofheim's quite a few days out, says Krummer, but nothing's worse than crossing the waste, I imagine. If there's any way you might be safe from dredge, it's there. You steal yourself for another long march and half the town of Wormtoe joins you. So we've got some Val with us in tow now and some supplies. 20 supplies is not enough, it's not going to cut it. Um, we might have to start losing people. It's the only thing I can think of. Some clansmen have discovered a large patch of wild fruit. 
When you approach, you see some people have begun to sample them. A mother frets about whether they're safe after overhearing one of the children say that it tastes funny. Others start gathering by the basketball. Uh, offer a piece to one of the animals in the caravan. Lacking a poison taster, you hold out the fruit to a goat. The beast sniffs it before eating the entire fruit. Only the pit falls to the ground, as the goat licks its mouth and leans towards your hand and wanting more. Now usually if an animal will eat, eat animals are pretty uh, intuitive when it comes to this sort of stuff, you know, um, they'll, they won't just eat anything. Um, take a bite for yourself. Several watch as you taste the fruit. You pause after swallowing and feign choking. Alep rushes to your side in a panic, but your laughter soothes everyone's concern. Soon everyone is a little tipsy from the fermented fruit and spirits are high. Good, got some supplies. It turns out they're not poisonous. 69 days. Uh, we missed it. We missed it. We missed the joke. How about the lucky number? A flurry of snowfall seems to come out of nowhere and quickly thickens until you are unable to see the man in front of you. You shout out a complete halt, but the screaming winds drown out the sound. A day passes before the blizzard abates and clansmen start to reappear from the snowdrifts. It quickly becomes apparent that not everybody is where you last saw them, and a quick search of the area is not enough to recover all the missing clansmen. Uh, make a first search for lost clansmen and ask volunteers to scout the media area, make a bonfire and wait for missing members to return, move on saying bless. I think we make a bonfire. Collect what you can for burning, you shout to everyone. We'll wait for the lost to find our beacon. Unfortunately there is no significant amount of dry wood and attempts to get a fire going are unsuccessful. Eventually you realise that nobody else has come in and returned to the trail. So we lost a few people and some supplies. 32 times maybe. Yeah, that was uh, probably not the best move, to be fair. We probably should have just kept moving or sent scouts. Um, but they might catch up eventually, if they don't freeze to death. Another godstone. Looks like another godstone. Godstone of Marrick blooms into view, a pot carved a great ocean beast. Jagged stones just out of the snow. Sorry. Jagged stones jut out of the snow like shark fins. It's hard to imagine the Nord felling wastes being filled with water at one time. But the Godstone stands as a reminder of the vast lake it used to look across. A blessing! shouts one of the men in your caravan, holding up what looks like a silver coin. It's a fish scale, he says, pointing out the rainbow pattern that show, shows in the sunlight. Soon a curious child has found another hiding in the snow, and then a third is discovered. Perhaps they'll bring us luck, you over here. And before long, the caravan has become obsessed with gathering the shining scales. This sounds like a trap. Uh, cut them off after a reasonable amount of time. Leave now, just before this gets out of hand. When you awake to find people still searching through snow and shrubs, you call it off. We can't spend another day here, you tell them. Be glad for the luck you've found and let's go before it runs out. They fret and moan, but eventually you get them back on the trail. Uh, should rest in camp to cover morale. Oh, has become poor. Yes, I think we probably should. Hardleaf calls you over, grinning. A row of women holding bows of differing age and experience line up before a row of trees in the distance. They fire, doing an impressive job of hitting the trunks. I think they're ready to fill some dredge with feathers. One woman still hasn't shot her arrow. She stands perfectly still. The others watch. Just as the wind shifts, she lets go and her arrow flies not into one of the trees, but a snow rabbit that had scurried out from underneath. Dinner? She says, smiling. A group of men from the caravan approach. Listen here, says one. 
practice all you want. My wife isn't fighting dredge. The other men agree in chorus. We don't want to see a battlefield full of dead wives and daughters. Stand by the women becoming fighters. I'm having second thoughts of them. I encourage Oliver to train even more archers. The men argue their point but eventually relent. Thanks, says Odliff. To be honest, it was harder than I expected, but the more people who can hold their own, the better. The women return to camp, not just as clansmen, but as fighters. So morale's improved and we've got some more fighters. We lost clansmen. I guess that's because they become fighters. As you're nodding off to sleep, shouts of fire pull you back to attention. Flames quickly consume a supply wagon and a few tents. A woman cries out, My boy! and points out to a burning tent closest to the outlying vow. Two of the giants are motionless, staring at the spreading fire with terror in their eyes. You have vow don't like them. Uh, going after the boy myself. Wrapping your cloak around you, the smoke, flames and tent become a blur as you grab the boy and slice through the bu back canvas with your hunting knife. You meet the ashamed look of the older Val while the crowd cheers on your heroic act. Unfortunately, the supply wagon did not make it. Oh, 41 supplies, that's a big deal. What in the depths was that about, you mutter to yourself. Something about the fire, Odliff tells you. I've heard of this before, they don't like it. It doesn't change what happened, you think to yourself. Okay, it doesn't change what happened, you think to yourself. We're on seven days worth of supplies now. That was bad. That was really bad. Uh, I can't afford to stop, morale's low. You hear a whistle on the wind and spot a long line of Val far up ahead, heading towards you. Behind them is a swarm of dredge, a trail of bodies leading off in the distance. Get down there! Barks a Seven supplies. Six days left. Oh, we've joined the rest of the party, which means we'll have days remaining now. Don't let them spread out, shouts the lead Val as you approach the battleground. Soon you almost regret finding yourself fighting alongside them, facing off against a daunting, daunting number of dredge. Dredge line the battlefield, weapon drawn, uh, you could take a haircut, there must be at least 117 of them. You have 96 fighters and 62 val at your side. Formations! Let's get the order. We're going in. And we're going in with what we've got. Do have Krummer and Fasfold now. Fasold. I might put Fasold in actually. Just just so we've got another um another Val. Because they're pretty pretty chunky guys. I don't know what Krummer's like, but he's got that big hammer, which might be might be handy. Good fight. We could use him in the next one, just to see what he's like. Especially if we get any injuries, we can swap him out. All right, so we've got some dredge. Um, all right, how do I want to play this? I think we have to have uh, either in line with this guy. Um, Let's leave it on that, I guess. Whoa! That's good, that's what I wanted. I wanted him to come this way. Rook can stay there. Start whittling the armor down on his dredge. Megan, I know you live a good scrap, so get in there, son. Yes. Uh oh. Let's get trickily a kill. Oh, maybe not. Oh, yeah, you can get it. There we go. One down. Oh no, 
I don't want that. It's always them that get picked on. Running for her, that's it, she's dead. Damn, I'm losing people left, right, and centre. Uh, why, why can't you just kill him? I can deal with, I think. Can't afford to make, uh, to rest these guys, you know, with like, um, rest days in the camp, because I've only got seven days with supplies, but if we're joining up with the other party, with, uh, Hakol and then lot, um, then I might be in luck. Um, because he can, he's got, they've got like 40 odd days of supplies or something stupid. Take a moment to survey the battlefield and pit. Yeah, I'm pulling back. So we're gonna lose, we're gonna lose some fighters. 10 fighters, six fighters. To. And there's no way I was going to survive another round of that. Eight renown. Isn't this a damn curiosity? This is the second time I've been sent to find a Val who is heading my direction with humans in tow. <laughs> what a dredge doing up here. 
gods. Does nobody know what's going on around here? They leveled Grofheim to the ground. We've been losing ground for days. Eurinder's in Einertoft now. They sent me to gather Krummer and the rest from Wormtoe when we ran across this bunch of slag. There's a lot more where they came from. If this is all the value you've got, is this all the value you've got, Krummer? What have you been doing? Eating each other? Many went to Blotz, Blotzbucker. Are you telling me Grofheim is completely gone? And Wagner's dead. Slag on our heels. The Val you sent off north are probably dead. The world's ending. Come on, this is old news. We're gathering in Einertoft. That's where we need to go right now. Wait. Fasolt takes a long moment to look out over the caravan of men, women and children behind you. Not them. Uh, what do you mean, not them? We just saved your ass. I'll die before you send us away. Unless you're a king or a mender, humans don't step foot in Einertoft. Now isn't the time for this discussion. Damn it, Fasolt. Who cares about that? What in the depths happened at Grofheim? Before Fasolt can reply, a low rumble grabs your attention, growing louder by the moment. Dredge. More dredge. Even though it's beyond sight, all eyes turn in Grofheim's direction as the rumbling becomes deafening, transforming quickly into cracking, and split splintering is coming closer. Go! shouts Fasolt, taken off towards Arnatov. Don't stop until you reach Harborg. What is it? Whoa! Whatever it is, just what? Just split a mountain in half. So maybe the gods do exist. This is one of them. Just split two mountains in half. Whatever it is, like a dredge god or something. It's like it's reshaping the earth. Maybe it's, um, oh, what was the name of that big snake in um, God of War? I can't remember. I'm sure one of you guys can tell me in the comments. Another box stone, it looks like a barn of building defences here. I'm not going to like me turning up. All these humans. After three terrifying days of tremors, you reach the godstone of Haraborg, which is teeming with Val, who wants to know what is happening. Others busily mend makeshift defences set up around the godstone of Haraborg, creator of the Val. Hold up. Pants for salt between long gasps of air. We're going to have a talk. You're still standing, well, most of you. Rest up, then move on. A mountain just sank into the earth, and some something is out there, and you're just going to send us away? I don't know who you are, but you're not going to Arnatoft. There's a couple hundred Val here who will back that up. Where are we supposed to go? Back the way we came, we're stuck between two mountain ranges. In one direction, a few thousand Val, in the other, an army of dredge and whatever caused that quake. Arnatoft is a Val city. That shouldn't be news to a Val. Give it a rest for Salt. Don't you recognise who you're talking to? Surprise suddenly flashes across for Salt's face. The other Val is starting to come closer now. You hear Ingvar being whispered between them. I think that might be the one person you want to let into Einatoft. Your... The humans come with me. All of them. He must be a prince or something. He must have been... Uh, well, I can't remember the other guy. The other princes. The one that died. Um, Bogner, Whatever his name is. Must be his brother or something. For salt glances between Ivo and Krummer before stalking away. Pushing past the mob of curious unlockers. Ivo... Who are you? Some other time, Rook. Alright okay, guys, so I'm going to end the episode there. Hope you've enjoyed it. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you on the next one.
Take care.